That is a horrible tradition. <laughs> we love you. Stay behind and die. All right, so I'm going to watch for the very first time episode one of The Rings of Power. Uh, it comes out in, oh, one minute. And so uh, I got to get going. We're, we're going to be looking for a few things. Uh, we've got Galadriel on the ocean rescued. We've got Arendir captured. We've got Bronwyn with the head chopped off of the orc. I think we've got Elrond still in Khazad Doom, right? The hobbits, Harfoots, weed people are with Encino Man, Meteor Man, uh, waiting for something, right? I want the, the plot to be driven forward this episode. I want to see who the bad guy is. I want I want to have some sort of consequential action when it comes to danger because nothing is apparent yet and it's getting a little boring or it's gotten a little boring. It's, it's been boring for the last two episodes. So let's hope that moves forward. So that's number one. Can, can, can we get some moving forward motion here on the plot? Number two is, uh, can we get some emotions? Like, uh, I don't care about Galadriel. She's just so like, angry and doesn't like anybody and there's nothing to care about her right she's just she's just a one note vengeance monster and that's boring uh Aaron Deer and Bronwyn their love is bland uh the most interesting one is Durin and Disa probably because we saw some different aspects to their relationship and how they interact and their kids right that was way more interesting than what we got from any of the other characters so I'm hoping we get more from that uh and from Aaron Deer. oh my gosh like I don't really care. It doesn't matter. Like he's so boring. So, and then number three, I really hope because this is this is what is the cherry on top of this show every single time is we get some awesome new lines, some new analogies, some new metaphors, things like, do you know why a ship floats and a stone cannot? Because a stone only sees downward. <laughs> or maybe where there is love, it is truly never dark. So I'm hoping that we see those and that you can find those and comment below because they are lovely and they are glorious. Because, you know, a dog may bark at the moon, but he cannot bring it down. So as you, as you go through this show and you bear the trials of the poor plotting and the bland characters and the 10th grade writing, remember Elrond's wise, wise, tortured words. The wine of victory is sweetest for those in whose bitter trials it has fermented. <laughs> All right, so let's get this started. But before we do, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe. So click the subscribe, you know, click the bell, uh, head over to the one ring.com slash patron. Uh, it's a way that you can support us. You know, we don't, we don't want to take anything away. We just add features. So we got your Discord channel. We're going to add a message board. We have an extended podcast, our Window on the West podcast, www.windowonthewest.com. So uh, we'd really appreciate your support. We're going to keep doing these videos. They will always be free, but we're just adding some extra stuff for those of you who really, really like what you're seeing and, you know, want to, want, to, want to give back to us a little bit. Hopefully you're enjoying what we're giving to you. So we'd appreciate that. Uh, Thewondering.com slash patron is where you can do that. Um, so let's get this started. Whoa, whoa, wait. An hour, and, an hour and 10 minutes? So all the elves are there. Hang on, hang on. So all the elves are there and they all got captured and they were keeping watch over this area. I mean, I, I guess they were, they were so racist they only worried about the, uh, the humans, about the men. Uh, and totally forgot about the orcs who, you know, you know, who cares about the orcs? They were only the ones that they fought against originally. Numenor, one billion dollars of TV show. Here we go. We've got big head, big head, sweeping shot, another big head, another big head, another big head, big person on a big horse. Get ready for the sweeping shots, I bet. This is from the trailer, right? So here we go. Sweeping shot, sweeping shot, sweeping shot. Oh. Halbrand wants a forge. Maybe to craft some rings? Hmm? Sweeping shot. Sweeping shot. After being on a raft with her for one day, he already knows, God, real, just don't antagonize all the people around you. You know, have you read Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People? Can we get that, that, that book in your hand soon so you know how to get people on your side? A man and an elf together. Hmm. Master of the obvious. Good job, our fair is on. I have no need of your welcome. And you are quickly wearing out yours. Can can she I mean gosh, again, I'm 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 beating this into the ground, but 
Why is she so angry? They, they saved her off the frickin' ocean a thousand miles from the shores of Middle Earth. And yet, yet she doesn't care. She doesn't, she's not appreciative at all. She's just angry and demanding and entitled. Well, you know, you write what you know. So not only have they raised Tar Muriel up to the queen, but they've taken Elendil down a notch because they don't even know who he is, apparently. Uh, even though his father was great friends with Art Farazan. But they can just keep changing the story, because that's fine. They know better. What, who's whispering his name? Who's that? Huh? There it is. That's the first one. The first memeable line. The sea is always right. Elendil. An uncommon name. From our western shores, is it not? It originates there. Pray tell, what does it mean? In fact, Elendil is not an uncommon name because I believe he was named after a previous king of Numenor, Tar Elendil. No elves have been unwelcome on our shores since the reign of my grandfather's great-grandfather. You chose to break with that precedent. Why? It was the sea that put her in my path. And the sea is always right. And the sea is always right. Oh, yes! Cool! Right on. Oh, gosh. Numenor. Hey, they got that right. Orcs don't like the sun. There's another one. Sweep these enemies from the lands like salt from a table. Sweep the enemies from the land like salt from a table. Oh, my gosh. Well, I don't care. Just get on. Like the 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 drum, dramatic pausing and the slow motion for this guy who we don't care about. Get on with it. Somehow, the orcs have created a swath of destruction, and the elves watching over this land missed it. I wanted to stay in the water where it was nice and cool, and the sun was shining down on me, and I was working on my tan, and I was alone with Halbrand. That was way better than being saved. As you wish. <laughs> this, is, this is kinda, I don't even know what to think of this shot. It's sort of like glee. On, this is the first time she's smiled. She's been on a horse. Like she loves her, her white horsies. This is so awkward. And the slow motion is, is so weird. I don't know what to make of it. It's like, I, I feel uncomfortable wa watching it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Look, I'm not even judging this on Tolkien standards. This is just weird when it comes to like normal TV. I don't like movie what who decided that is poor. <sighs> I don't understand the style. Is it supposed to Okay, never mind. I'm going to stop trying to understand. Just going to stop trying to understand. And loyalty to the elves, loyalty to the Valar. It's like they don't even want to acknowledge that that there is any supernatural element to to Tolkien's work, like the Valar don't matter at all. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry. What is up with the odd weird timing of slow-mo? These are the worst kind of hobbits that a guy gets injured and they're like, Sorry, we're done. You get you get left behind. Remember those wolves? Yeah, they're just, you know, play dead. Giant with a brackish temper who sometimes murders fireflies. That was an accident. <laughs> he murders fireflies. Fireflies are, are nice. We, we can't kill those. But those snails, we're going to eat them and kill them. Murder the snails so that we can fill our bellies. That is a horrible tradition. <laughs> we love you. Stay behind and die. What was I supposed to do? Leave him there? You must admit, Sadik. <laughs> well, wait. Of course you were supposed to leave him there. Just like they left all the other people who couldn't keep up on their caravan. Of course. The Galadriel. Scourge of the Orcs. Never mind <laughs> Scourge of the Orcs. Gladriel, Lady of Light, Scourge of the Orcs. Hey, at least at least with the puppet here, they got they got her uh, her gown right. Help. Is this a prophecy? Bring him to Adan. Why? Oh man. Well, there we have it. That is episode three of 
of the Rings of Power Adar, so the whole namesake of this episode doesn't appear to the last three seconds and is uh, I couldn't focus on them apparently because equipment went out. So what did I think? Well, we got no Elrond, no Celebrimbor, and no Durin. And I guess we got a little movement on Sauron, uh, finding that he's in the Southlands, that they're recreating that. But see, the problem is, is we already knew that, and Galadriel just figured it out. Um, so it would have been nice maybe to somehow tie that up. And at the same time, they could have driven her storyline forward a little faster than showing us that everything's happening in the Southlands already. And we don't really care because we know that that's where the danger is. But now she knows too. Even they Tie these things together. Reveal them at the same time. Make it worth our while. And still, the only time we've seen her smile is in that really odd horse slow motion she's super duper excited she's boy the joy is flowing from her face because she's on a horse she's not thankful for being picked up by ellen dill it's the little things again right i don't care about galadriel she's so angry she doesn't get anybody on her side it's everybody else has to break her down and only when she gets what she wants is she happy with the horses or with the uh, the the mark that we already all knew was mordor all these sorts of things that don't endear her to us at all. So what was the best part of the show? You know, uh, God, I just can't stand the Harfoots. The whole idea that they just abandon people. <laughs> they just like, well, you're going to fall behind. I'm sorry, Bob. Just sit down and die while we move on. What kind of community is this? I thought, I mean, uh, these are the worst kind of hobbits. Uh, my, that was my least favorite. That storyline drives me bananas. I, we didn't even get to see anything with the the constellation or the fireflies. What happened at the end of the previous episode, episode two? There's no further movement with his role. All we get is boy, what do we get? We get them moving, and I, mean, I guess he's known now by the Harfoots. That's it. That's all. That's the only movement we have in that entire story is that he is no longer hidden. They don't know where the, they, they still haven't figured out where the stars are. That's, that was the point at the end of the episode and we're still leaving that open. It's just ridiculous. Like give us something with them. This, their whole storyline could be boiled down to probably like a six minute editing session. It doesn't matter. Just show us the parts and cut those down too. The whole thing with, with Encino Man, it does not matter until, until we figure out why is there the whole Harfoot's. Oh, the dirtiness and the and the the crap in their hair, the weeds and the berries and the acorns and everything is so dirty. Why are they dirty? Being rustic doesn't mean you're dirty. Okay, that was my my least favorite Harfoots by far. So it was probably my my most favorite, or how about my my least disliked part of it? I guess the Elendil storyline that was more interesting, uh, even though I think they they ruined his character with saying he was a nobody. Um, his father was Amandil, close friend of Arpharazan. Before Arpharazan became, uh, I guess you could say he became the power-hungry usurper in Tolkien's story. Uh, and Amandil was the leader of the faithful, and he sailed into the West to try and um, persuade the Valar to assist, but... Uh, he never returned. So, so, uh, so Ellen Dill, yeah. And we got to see Isildur a little bit, even though that was a little forced with, you know, I don't want to be a salesman, daddy. That's not what I want to go to college. I don't want to go where you want me to go. I want to make my own way in my life. So kind of a standard tropey kind of storyline there. So I guess that was, that was the most interesting just because it was new. Uh, and, uh, I got to see some of that without Galadriel, because I just, I really can't stand Galadriel. What's sad is I think she's my least favorite character in the entire show. I mean, we have Tarmiriel now. She's not any, uh, I'm not going to judge her yet. We barely have anything of her. Uh, she's got to be my least favorite character because she's so one dimensional. She's just angry. She's just need, she's, she just wants her own way. There's nothing soft about her. There's nothing interesting about her. She's not the lady of light. She's not 5,000 years old. Like we were, well, like she should be. I don't think people really like her. There's nothing to like about her because she's just angry at everybody and she wants her own way. I mean, she was saved by Elendil 
and she has no thanks at all. She's in the middle of the freaking ocean, thousand miles away from the shores of Middle Earth, jumped off a magic elf boat and committed suicide, essentially, and yet somehow still survived and then was on the, the magic raft that endured massive swells of storms in the sundering seas and uh, was randomly picked up by, by Elendil. And apparently she's also part of the... Uh, <laughs> She's part of the prophecy that somehow was there too, because in order to make it worthwhile, in order to drive Muriel into, into a, an alliance of some sort with her, there's got to be a prophecy, right? Man, how lazy is that? Just throw a prophecy out there. Just like, just like we saw with the Harfoots, they have these little prophecy bits and you know, there, there's the stars and, and uh, elf leader man, Lenny Henry, uh, he, he doesn't want to talk about it because I'm sure there's some prophecy again. I mean, I, when you read uh, fantasy books, I put down the first fantasy book that I'll read when it when all they do is they're trying to fulfill some sort of random prophecy because it's a lazy way of creating a target. Now their target is to get Muriel and um, and Galadriel together, and so there's a prophecy. Yippee ki yay! So to those of you who made it through, the wine of victory is sweetest for those whose bitter trials it has fermented. So what did you think? How much of this? Could you sit through? I'm going to sit through this because, well, I have to. If you want to see more of this stuff, we'd love your support. Head to thewondering.com slash patron, uh, and you can support us there. Uh, there's a, a Discord channel that we just kicked off. We've got a few folks in there already. And we've got uh, message boards that are coming, and we'll have an extended edition of the podcast uh, within the next few weeks too, I imagine. So thanks for listening, and uh, I'll see you when we chat with Michael and Dan in depth on episode three, Adar. See you next time.